Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for June 27th, 2023 on this fantastic looking Tuesday in the office. I also wanted to show you all really quickly before we do get started with the video that I did get my new Weatherlink console. It's a very, very beautiful detailed console where you can actually see more readings you can look at historical records more on that with live streams coming up on that probably but you could also check out my um, post that i did on the youtube channel as well by going to community posts for more on that but it's a very beautiful console but you know what's not beautiful is the hot weather that we're going to be talking about so without further ado let's get started and look at the european model because there is a ferocious beast heat wave that is coming for the west for the desert southwest and continuing even for texas where we're going to be seeing some dangerously hot temperatures including very high heat indexes this is going to impact quite a few people over a million well over a million perhaps with temperatures that could reach 115 even 120 degrees in some isolated locations so yeah this heat wave is to be taken very seriously so let's actually take a look now uh, at with what we're dealing with with showers and thunderstorms going on across the northern united states we got showers and thunderstorms going on also for the northeast yeah it's on the lower right side of the screen on radar radar scope where you see those showers moving into pennsylvania moving into actually new jersey as well as uh, maryland seeing some strong storms so that's what this actually indicates so going forward uh, more showers um, and thunderstorms over the uh, northern central plains for your thursday uh, june 29th so waking up in the morning you might get some showers and storms and this could continue all the way into friday but notice how these pop up overnight probably going to be elevated stuff not much in the way of surface space storms so more than likely a damaging wind and hail threat more than a tornado threat but still some severe weather could linger throughout the high plains even into the midwest and more showers continuing all the way into friday for J uh, july the first yeah july can you believe it we're over halfway through the year before you know it, it'll be 2024 and yeah look at this for july some july showers and storms for the upper midwest for the northeast including for the ozarks down here and texas while much of the west is going to be baking in hot weather long to go with sunny skies no monsoon it's saying a goodbye for a while here as uh, according to the latest weather pattern analysis in the forecast and then uh, by uh, Sunday and by Monday here, yeah, maybe more showers, more thunderstorms for the high plains and for, again, portions there of Tennessee, Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland. And then for July 4th, everyone has been waiting for this patiently for my July 4th forecast. It is looking pretty soggy for many areas here, especially for Arkansas, for uh, Texas. If you are in Florida, maybe Ocala, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Tampa, if you're going to go watch the fireworks, just be aware. Yeah, it might get rained out because of the thunderstorms, lightning going on there. And for the northern tier here, like Wisconsin, might get showered out due to some of the showers that are in the area for 4th of July festivities. But like, if you want to see the fireworks in California, Arizona, Nevada looks to be pretty good, including for Montana, Washington, and Oregon for the most part, look to be pretty dry for the fireworks. So now, as far as those temperatures go, it is going to be the temperatures that we are quite concerned about, okay? You're going to hear me talk a lot about this the rest of the video, and I know some of you are probably annoyed by it, but we got to talk about this, okay? When temperatures reach at or above 110, 115 degrees where areas that you don't typically see that it could really bring about a lot of concerns heat related illnesses heat exhaustion heat stroke your body cannot cool off adequately if you're outside in the hot sun i hope that makes sense because there's gonna be a lot of that in california like redding red bluff bakersfield fresno if you're in stockton lodi fairfield sacramento it can be very hot death valley could even reach 125 degrees by saturday phoenix arizona tucson arizona if you are in say las vegas some very hot spots coming 
to your direction by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even into Monday. Let's get started here and look at those temperatures. Texas, for sure, under a big heat wave. It's been like that for over a week already with temperatures at or above 105 degrees. So by now, you're probably used to it, but still, take it seriously. Going to be pretty hot for Wednesday across Oklahoma. If you're in Arkansas, Louisiana, yeah, temperatures at or above 105, 110 degrees so it's not going to feel really good out there. And then look at this. Temperatures maybe 110 uh, degrees over Arkansas, southern portion there of Missouri. Man, very, very warm. Even Georgia, look at this. Even Florida, temperatures could be at or above 100 degrees uh, factoring in the humidity. It's going to just feel sweltering out there. It's just going to be miserable. And we will show you that here on our apparent temperature yeah, take a look at this. Might feel like 115 degrees there for Arkansas for your Thursday. So keep that in mind. Uh, not much to uh, get relief unless you're inside. And then it starts cooling down a little bit on Friday for the deep south here. But look at this. For much of the west, for California, for Arizona, really going to start turning up the heat on Friday. And then you can see uh, on the Euro, possibly the hottest days, Saturday and Sunday, with temperatures at or above 105, 110 degrees. For Redding, uh, for Red Bluff, if you're in Chico, if you're in Bakersfield, Fresno, if you are in Palm Springs, boy, oh boy, 116, 118 degrees. And it's not really illustrated in Death Valley because this is not a high-res model, but it could get up above 125 degrees there. And then look at this, for Sunday, Ooh, even hotter, especially away from the Delta. We'll take a closer zoomed-in view here in just a second. But possibly 115-plus degrees potentially on the Euro for California, for southern Nevada, the portions there of westernmost Arizona, as well as southeastern California. And then it looks like temperatures do cool off a little bit by Monday and Tuesday, including for Texas. So the t uh, pattern is changing, which is good because... Well, good for some, bad for others, I should say. So let's take a zoomed in view of how warm it's going to look. Now we're going to use a GFS because it's always good to compare two different models here. Because the GFS is probably an outlier here showing the worst hot weather conditions, but it's always good to look at this. You can see for Wednesday, 90 to 95 degrees. And then let's go into Thursday for the desert southwest region here. Temperatures between about 100 to 105 degrees. And then look at this for Friday is when it really gets hot. 109 degrees in Stockton. If you're down in Fresno, 111. Bakersfield, probably 112. Red Bluff, Redding, 110. If you are in, uh, say, Palm Springs, maybe 110. If you are in Phoenix, Arizona, there, 104 degrees. If you're in Las Vegas, probably about 105 to 108 degrees for your Friday. But look at this. It's only going to get hotter. Let's take a look at this. For Saturday afternoon, oh my goodness, 116 degrees. The good thing is there's going to be some drier air, so it's not going to feel all that bad when you think about it because the heat index, 107 degrees, while the actual air temperature will feel like 116, which means um, the dew points, the humidity will be so low that it will actually feel cooler than it would if there's a lot of humidity in the air. But still, nevertheless, take these temperatures really seriously. 114, 115 degrees in Palm Springs, 110 in Phoenix if you are in Las Vegas, 107. But especially here in the valley is where we're not used to this these temperatures at all. I mean, we are in the 70s and 80s today. In a couple of days, we're going to be in the triple digits. So a quick warm-up here. Our bodies are not going to be able to acclimate very quickly to this. And that's why the, in, uh, the National Weather Service has issued a major to extreme heat risk for California. Because we're going to have temperatures at or above 110, maybe even eclipsing 115 degrees. And then look at this, 117, 116, even 118. I don't think it will be 118 for sure in the Central Valley, but it can happen in July, and that's what we're worried about here. So the 2nd of July on Sunday could be the hottest day of the weekend or of this heat wave across much of our region, and then we lose the heat a little bit by the time we go into Monday. Many areas start cooling down a little bit, except for the desert southwest where you might be at or above 110 degrees. Central Valley locations much cooler though, and then we kind of level off there between about 100 to 105 for the remainder of the week. So just be aware of that. Dangerous heat is coming. In fact, if we actually switch gears here really quickly, 
There are excessive heat advisories, heat war, uh, yeah, heat watches out for much of the Central Valley for the Bay Area spots, just to show you just how warm it's going to be. Uh, excessive heat warnings, heat advisories are out all across. I mean, look at all these heat products. Let me actually outline this in black. Yeah, all these areas here going to see some pretty hot temperatures, including for southeastern Arizona. Going to be baking very dangerously with those temperatures. I'm even surprised there's no heat watches over Death Valley where they could see temperatures at or above 120, 125 degrees, where it's typically the hottest place in the United States. No surprise by that. But I also wanted to take your guys' attention here. Look at all these smoke advisories, smoke alerts out there. Because all these fires burning in Cal um, Canada, not getting any relief here. I've been having some bad air quality over the last few days. And even in early July, or even early June, late May, have had some bad air quality issues here too, including for the Northeast. So yeah, smoke is going to be a familiar sight to see over the next coming days. So now, back to Weather Bell. Why is it going to be so hot? Okay, we're going to look at our low-level temperatures here in just a second. Well, the reason why it's going to be hot is if we take a look at our geopotential height map here, we can see this ridge right here is going to be building in across California. When we get upper-level ridges here, our thicknesses, our geopotential heights go up, our temperatures warm up because there's uh, the air mass is thicker. These are what we call thicknesses in the atmosphere, these lines of um, geopotential height. And that's going to stay with us all the way through Sunday. But it's not until we get into, say, Monday and Tuesday when this trough right here, anomalously weak, though, because our heights here are above average. But it's a strong enough trough where it will bring down temperatures just by a few degrees, but still pretty hot. Uh, for early July standards for California. Still a well above average for this time of the year while the ridge is down here across the four corners. And it doesn't look like we're going to see much in the way of changes in the weather pattern as we get that northwesterly flow that's dry and warm typically. Now combining with that 850 millibar temperatures, I always like looking at this type of product because it gives us an idea what our potential temperature might end up being if we get sufficient mixing in the atmosphere. So going forward, we can see this air mass here really warms over Nevada, over California, over the desert southwest. That's why your daytime highs and overnight lows will be warming up. Not just daytime highs, but overnight lows too. And look at this, uh, really warm uh, here, anywhere between 30 to 35 Celsius. Now, this, why do they use Celsius? I don't know, but... That will bring your temperatures into the upper 90s at 5,000 feet, even low 100s in some areas. So that is very, very warm at that particular level. Remember, as you go up higher, it gets cooler, right? But the air mass is so warm, it's even hot at 5,000 feet above the surface. So this is a product that I like to use to forecast temperatures because it assumes that we get a well-mixed boundary layer by the afternoon and we mix out all that inversion cooler air and we are able to sufficiently warm things up especially if the air mass is relatively dry we're able to mix down some of that drier air due to diurnal mixing or mechanical mixing that can actually happen and so by the time we go into the middle of next week these temperatures should come down at the lower levels which means that will likely mean cooler temperatures um, from here on out by the middle of next week. So now before I do end it, I want to actually show you guys this one last time. If you missed it at the beginning of the video, yeah, this is my new weather console. It is called WeatherLink Console. You can find it on davisinstruments.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. It's about $400. Um, including tax and shipping and stuff. So if you guys want to check it out, it is pretty cool. You can do a lot with this. You can view um, graphs. Let's see here. You can view graphs. Come on. There we go. You can view a lot, including, uh, let's see if we can do this, including your records. You can view annual records and everything. Compare your station with all the records that you see here. Sorry, it's overexposed, but it is very cool. You can't miss this. All right. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to that Weatherling console. I know it's expensive, but it is definitely worth the price. It's better than the good old Davis uh, console, which is this one right here.
This is the old version. This is the new version. Okay, pretty cool. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, sharing this video with your family and friends on social media, and also leave a comment to let me know how you liked today's video because I showed you that good old fancy bells and whistles console here on the video. And I'm looking into actually showing you all this during one of my live streams if it's a hurricane, tropical storm, or severe weather or winter weather event. All right, but thank you all for watching. I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather content.